With the HID object, you can interface HID compliant devices connected to your computer in PD. I've got a Logitech joypad connected to the computer and I'm going to interface the different uh, buttons and switches and then do something meaningful with the data that comes out. The first thing I need to do is create an instance of the HID object. Now we'll need to create a series of messages and objects to go into the HID object in order to print a list of available devices, to refresh that list, to open a particular device, that is to open access to the device, and as well to start polling the device. So first I'll create a print message. This will allow us to see what devices we can access. Then I'll create a refresh message. This will allow us to refresh the list if we need to. This is helpful if you connect the new device um, after you've created your patch. Then I'll create an H radio that will act as an index for the devices to access. So I'll connect this to a number atom so that we can see what the index is. And then I'll connect the number atom to an open message. Open dollar sign one. So I'm taking dollar sign one will be the index of what we open. Of course, if I knew the index already, I could just hard code that into the message. But sometimes it'll change from session to session. So this is much more flexible. Okay, now lock the patcher and click print and go to the console. And we see a list of devices. And the important information here is we've got to find the Logitech joypad, which is here under device six. It tells you it's a joystick, gives you some other information. And what we need is the six part of the list. That's what we're going to use in the H radio. So we'll go back and then we'll click the sixth um, option. So, oh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So now we're accessing the sixth device. Finally, we need to create a toggle. And this toggle will start polling the device. So when it's off, we're not receiving information from the device. When it's on, we are receiving information from the device. And you can actually go into even uh, finer detail. You can offset the polling by a certain number of milliseconds if you needed to, but we won't do that now. So I'll start polling and then I'll create a print message to see what kind of data is coming out of the device. And connect that to the left outlet. We won't go over the right outlet today. Okay, and head to the console window. We'll clear it and let's press some buttons on the device. So we can see that the messages um, have some sort of prefix followed by a qualifier and then the actual data. So what we'll do is we'll use route to route the messages according to their prefix and then we'll use route again to route them according to their qualifier and then we'll get the final information. So we'll go to the patcher, get rid of the print and create route. Let's say that we wanted to get the left analog stick. That's this right here. So we know that that has a prefix of ABS because we moved it and we could see that. Um, in the window. And I guess while we're at it, let's go back over to the console. Another um, prefix is key, so we can go ahead and create that now. Okay, so now we'll create another route. And abs underscore x, abs underscore y. So that's the x and y positioning of the, um, of the hat. And then we'll create number atoms to connect to this and look at the data. Okay, so we get the X, which is left and right, and the Y, which is up and down. And the values are from 0 to 255, so if you wanted to scale them, you could apply some math, you could do this. Divide by 255. 
and that'll give you a range from 0 to 1. And then multiply by your scaling factor, so let's say 100. And I can't remember if there's an object that already does this, but this is the long way to do it. Okay, and then we'll copy this over. And this might be really helpful if you were scaling this for MIDI control, which we will do in the latter portion of this movie. So now, we'll take a look at the data after the scaling, and we can see that it goes from 0 to about 100, um, and we get these nice floats. So when we come back, we'll look at actually um, making a very simple musical controller using the buttons on the joypad uh, for a note input, and then we'll do some uh, control with the hat. Using the Logitech joypad for control connected to PD with the HID object and Native Instruments FM8, we'll create a very basic instrument that will allow us to play notes using the buttons and morph the sound using the left analog stick. Okay, so I've got the patch that I started earlier, and I've routed the left analog stick. So if I move the stick, we see values here at the bottom that have been scaled to 100. Since I'll be dealing with MIDI, I'll scale them to 127. Also, I'm going to add an int object between so I can truncate the floats. You could just type I. I won't be too particular here. Okay, so this will give us truncated floats. They're not rounded, so they may look like they are, but they're not. So if I move the stick, I've got good information for uh, MIDI. Don't, don't need to send floats out. Okay, so I've already routed the left stick, so now I need to route the keys. So I will tap this part of the route message and send an outlet to another route and btn underscore zero, btn underscore one, btn underscore two, and btn underscore three. How do I know that that's what I need? Well, if I connect a print object to the second outlet and take a look at the window and start pressing buttons, I'll see that I get BTN underscore one, two, three, and zero. Okay, so now I'll go ahead and create number atoms beneath. Okay. And those ones are created because I accidentally click, but that's okay. All right, and now as I press the zero, which is the leftmost. 1 is the bottom, 2 is the rightmost, and 3 is the top. So what we need to do is use note out and control out to create note on, note off messages and to link up the left stick to control in FM8. Now, I realize that you might not have FM8, but this basic um, Connectivity can happen between any software that supports MIDI in and control changes. So let's take a look at FM8. I've got a sound loaded in uh, that by default allows for a really cool morphing using this sort of chaos pad looking interface. So it makes sense that I'm going to use the left stick to traverse um, this XY space. So here's what it sounds like in the top left corner. And as I move this, you can hear that the sound changes dramatically. It's not the most pleasing sound, uh, but not all sound has to be pleasing. Okay, so first thing we should do is focus on how do we create note on, note off. We're not gonna use make note because we want the notes to be on for as long as we hold a button down and then to 
be off when we release the button. And make note would limit us to a note of a predetermined length. So what we'll do instead, we'll create note out channel one and create two messages. One message will be the pitch. So let's say we want pitch 64. Uh, that's an E above middle C, space, and then a velocity. And we could actually, you know, do something where we tied the velocity to the right stick, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to stick to a rather middle of the road velocity, let's say 60. And we'll connect that to node out. And now we need to create the note off version of this, which is going to be the same pitch, but what we'll do is we'll say dollar sign one. The reason we're using a dollar sign here is because the off version of a button automatically sends a zero. So we might as well just send that into this particular message. And we'll connect that into note out. Now we can use a Moses. So Moses one. And connect that to the button. So take the output of the button, connect it to the Moses, and then connect the left output to 60, so numbers one and greater, or um, output it to the right, rather, sorry, that's the right output, and then the left output to the note off. And tidy it up just a bit. Okay, so if I press this uh, button down, we should hear an E and then release. So it's a bit slow to speak. That's kind of cool sounding actually. So let's make a few of these, four to be exact. And you could get really expressive with this. You can come up with key combinations so that if you press two buttons, you get a different result. It would take a lot more conditional logic, um, but uh, the sky's the limit in terms of your imagination. Okay, so that's an E. Let's say we do a B. Uh, so that's going to be, uh, let's see, 51. Oops, sorry, not 51. 71. Make sure you change the note off too. And we'll do a D natural. 73, 74 rather. And let's do an F sharp. So how about 66? And you can look these key codes up online. Okay, connect all of your outlets from the buttons. And start pressing buttons. Okay, so it's, it, the sound is very eerie. Um, if we had just a straight up piano sound, you would hear a much clearer sort of um, E7 uh, sus2 kind of thing. Okay, so now we need to link up the uh, left stick to the control. And what we're gonna do is we need to set up in FM8 the control for this XY morphing. And Whatever software you use will probably have documentation on what MIDI control will control a certain parameter, so you'll have to look it up. In this particular case, we can assign it. So here under the master um, option in the navigator, I'm going to set the control here to MIDI controller 21 for the X and 22 for the Y. So as it receives a control on these two channels, then the X and Y will move. So we're looking to move this red box right here. Okay, so I'll create CTL out space one and copy that again. And I already know that I'm going to be using channels 21 and 22, and that's the second inlet is the um, or controller rather, 21 and 22, so the second inlet is the controller number. And the leftmost inlet is the value. 
So I can just bang these in advance. You could put a load bang if you wanted. And now I'll take the output from the hat and pipe it into the controls. So as I move the stick, I should see um, I should see this red box move. And we do. So now if I press down a note and move the stick, And the note got stuck there, uh, which I'm not surprised. Uh, we would maybe have to code it a little tighter. Anyhow, that gives you an idea of how you can begin to use um, input via HID and connect it to maybe a soft synth. We could connect this to a uh, tab read four and read a table at different rates and create some math to basically take maybe the speed um, and affect it with the hat. Um, the possibilities are really uh, great and it just takes a little bit of patience with the HID object because sometimes in that list of objects it'll seem like you can access something but you can't uh, but stick with it print the list uh, try and access the object and then get your data